Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at how to handle zoom and rotation with a spring arm in Unreal Engine. So uh, basically what we're going to have is a camera connected to a spring arm and we're going to be controlling the properties of the spring arm to sort of achieve uh, the nice smooth zoom effect as well as rotation. So I'm going to be looking at two different techniques here. So um, if you want to use the spring arm, this, uh, this one should be the right one. Um, but in the second video, I'm going to be using uh, camera lens options instead. So if you don't want to be using a spring arm, do check that one out or maybe check uh, both the techniques to see which one uh, you prefer because the effects are a bit different. Um, so yeah, let's uh, start off with a demo to see what it is that we're making. Um, and then you can sort of decide which one you prefer. So I'm using this on a character selection screen. So, uh, you know, obviously your use case can be whatever you like. I can right click uh, and drag uh, to rotate the camera around the object. I can also drag up and down to move the camera position you know, up and down. And then I can also use the mouse wheel to sort of zoom in and out. So uh, let's put this here so you can see I'm zooming in. And once it reaches a certain point, it is going to stop zooming in further. And likewise with zoom out as well. So uh, as soon as it starts approaching a certain distance, it will start capping it. Um, yeah, so all of the steps um, will be available here in this post. So it goes through all the steps you need to do in order to achieve this. And I'm going to give sort of a brief overview of what you need to do in Unreal Engine Blueprints as well. So uh, we can get started with that now. Okay, so perhaps the first thing that you might want to do is create a new uh, character um, object. So basically, when you start your Unreal Engine game or project, uh, you're going to have a pawn which uh, sort of enters the map, right? So uh, if you don't already have one, you can create one. So um, this will be a very simple uh, blueprint. Uh, basically, I don't have a skeletal mesh. Uh, if you have a static object that you want to sort of zoom in and out of, you can put it over here. Um, I'm actually changing the object in the map instead. Um, but basically, I have myself a... Uh, character um, class here so you can see parent class character and all I needed to do is add myself a spring arm and a camera in terms of blueprints I didn't really have to do too much other than uh, when you begin play you basically set the spring arm component into the um, character or player controller so um, I'll show that shortly when we open that up uh, but basically we have to create ourselves a uh, character controller, the character class that we've just looked at, and potentially modify the game mode. Um, but you don't have to create the game mode if you just override it into the world settings. Uh, so basically, when you have a map open, you've got the world settings here. So you want to just set the uh, pawn class to be the uh, character blueprint that you've created. And also the player controller class, uh, you can see me controlling that here. So uh, in order to create them, you know, you click right click, Create blueprint class so you can create yourself the character class over here player control over here and then the game and mode base over here so all of these steps are in the post so check that out if you're not sure how to do it um, and yeah let's have a look into the um, player controller next okay so uh, the next thing that we'll probably look at is the event graph so basically we're going to be creating these uh, three new graphs uh, as we want to keep all of the logic separate, you know, this is again preference to people. As long as you've got uh, the right blueprints, you can order them in any shape or form you like. Uh, this is just how I've done it to keep uh, all the logic separate. So in the event graph, it's quite clean. There's not much going on. Uh, we just basically have a call for it's the entry point for the bind, rotate and zoom events. And then we also have a separate graph for handling the rotate and handling the zoom functionality. Uh, this is just to help with de debugging. If you've got any issues, you know where to look quite quickly, but obviously you can actually merge them together. So anyway, uh, here we have this call. So this takes us into the bind, rotate and zoom events. And basically what this does is sets ourselves a timer. Uh, so every 0.03 seconds, we're going to call this custom event, uh, which is going to execute these three functions. Now, this does imply that you could add, add this logic onto event tick. It's not going to be that different, right? So you can go ahead and do that. Uh, I prefer to have this controlled through this timer event. Again, this is up to your preference. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the, the rest of the functionality that we need to do here. 
so before I go into those, I'll probably cover the rest of uh, these. Uh, so basically what we have here is uh, input action right mouse click. So this means when I right click on the mouse, um, when the game is open, the project's open, what I'm going to do is record myself the previous uh, location X and Y. Uh, this is just to initialize them. So I want to start measuring the drag, right? So I'm just going to set the um, uh, location X and Y locally. And I'm going to um, toggle this Boolean zoom in progress. Now, this name could be a bit better, right? So I would actually advise people to rename this to something more sensible. Uh, but for me, what it means is that like um, my zoom rotation is in progress because there could be like multiple different rotations. Uh, so like I say, this is not a good name. Uh, call it whatever you like. Uh, and when I release the right mouse button, uh, the zoom in progress will be set to false. Okay, so this is just something to toggle uh, because, uh, and we're using it here, right? So update and drag. Uh, we only really want to evaluate the drag if uh, we're basically right clicking and we're, we're doing something. Otherwise, you know, no, no need to process it. Okay, so that's right mouse click. And then also we've got some uh, input action, zoom in and zoom out, right? So uh, zoom out will add three to the velocity and zoom in will subtract three from the velocity. Now, what these actually refer to is the velocity at which we will uh, reduce or increase uh, the distance between the camera and your object, right? So this is what this is trying to do. Uh, but the actual processing of this velocity will happen uh, in these calls, right? So now we can start looking into that. Okay, so every 0.03 seconds, we're going to be executing these three calls. So the first one, as we mentioned, is we're going to be updating the, the drag. Uh, we only want to do this if the right mouse button is clicked, right? So uh, let's have a look inside here. Uh, so this is um, may look a bit complicated, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, all we do is um, we look into the get mouse position. So in order to do that, we get the player controller get the mouse position so we have ourselves the x and the y values uh we set them locally here you don't you don't need to um but it will look a bit more messy if you don't um but we basically have ourselves this previous location x and previous location y so we just basically take the new values that we get uh from here and we subtract the previous ones right uh and that's how we get ourselves the drag sum x and drag some, uh, drag some Y, okay? Uh, and then we just also update the previous locations for the next iteration, right? So that's what we do when we're updating the drag. So let's go back. And uh, the next things that we're gonna do is evaluate the zoom and then adjust the camera position. So let's look into evaluate zoom first, okay? So uh, this is uh, doing something interesting actually. Okay, so inside the evaluate zoom functionality, we're going to be leveraging these um, curves. And the way that the curves work is that basically, uh, given a certain input, they're going to give you an output based on the way the curve looks, right? So uh, you can see us feeding in a curve here. So inside there, the input for the curve that we're going to be using is the camera spring arm length, right? And so the way we're going to be using the output is actually as a multiplier. So you can see that there's a multiplier here. So you can see that the velocity uh, that we currently have is going to be multiplied by whatever the output here is. Uh, so let's open up the curve. So you can see I've created some curves over here. So this is a zoom in multiplier. So uh, the way it works basically is you can define some keys here. So I've only got two on each curve. Uh, so you can see here, uh, one is set to 100 and 0. Uh, this basically means as we're moving in, or you're zooming the camera into the object, as soon as it starts to approach uh, 100 units, uh, your multiplier is going to drop down to 0, right? Uh, and as you're, um, wait, like, and it starts to drop from 200 units. So if you're like 300 units away uh, and you're zooming in, the multiplier is 1. But as you're starting approaching 200, or rather after 200, uh, your multiplier starts decreasing until you've uh, basically hit 100 units, at which point it's a zero, okay? And it's kind of the opposite for the zoom out curve. 
uh, because basically as you're approaching 230 units uh, it will be one and then as soon as you've uh, reached 230 and you're reaching 300 it starts to fall down to zero okay and then it is zero um, 300 or further right uh, so that's how we're going to be utilizing these curves uh, so you provide it an input, the input is the existing camera uh, arm length, right? And uh, you get yourself the multiplier there, and you multiply it by the zoom velocity, and you also add a little bit of a decay. So even if the multiplier is 1, so let's say you're a distance of exactly 200, so the, the multiplier here will be 1. Uh, every tick, you still want to decay that value, so basically make it slightly smaller. Just so that you have this, um, uh, like, so I'm going to move this a little bit. And you can see it's like slowing down by itself, right? So uh, that 0.9 gives us that decay. So uh, you can make it a little bit bigger. So, well, in fact, let's put it to 0.98. So um, you can see uh, I zoom in a little bit or zoom out uh, a little bit. Uh, and it keeps going, you know, quite a lot until... Uh, the other multiplier kicks in so this will basically bring it down uh, so you you can control the smoothness using this little decay uh, that parameter over here uh, and that's how we control our zoom velocity uh, so let's go back to here um, okay so once we've uh, processed the camera arm length oh uh, well, this is probably not a good name actually so um once we process the the um, velocity uh, we want to actually apply the vol velocity to the camera arm and the way we do that is we have ourselves the camera spring arm component over here and we just basically add the zoom velocity to it so remember like uh, th this velocity can can go down to zero and depending on your um, camera uh, length right so basically the spring arm length if it's like 300, for instance, and you're trying to zoom out further, the multiplier is zero. Even if you uh, apply a bit of um, motion, you know, to the mouse. Uh, so yeah, this can go to zero. So this is how, how we basically control it. So you set the camera arm length for the spring arm. Okay. So let's go back to find these events. So that's how the zoom works. So let's have a look at the adjusting of the camera position. And the last thing that we're going to look at is adjust camera position. So um, this is basically the one uh, that will rotate around the object and also make it go up and down. Uh, so this is evaluated ma ma mainly off uh, the mouse drag. So as you're basically moving the uh, mouse left or right or up and down um, while the right mouse button is clicked. And um, so what we're going to be doing is basically adding rotation to the spring arm uh, when you're moving it uh, along the x-axis. And when you're moving it on along the y-axis, we're going to be adding the world offset. Um, yeah, so yeah, exactly. So the way we're going to do it is based off uh, the drag, so the mouse drag. So this might look a little bit more complicated, but it's again relatively simple. Uh, what we do is we create ourselves two new parameters so you can yeah, just create two new variables um, Call them as you like, uh, but basically it's velocity x and velocity y uh, We want to add a bit of a decaying factor here again, so 0.9 um, Which basically means every iteration your velocity just starts to slowly fade um, And we wanted to do it here just because we've got a branch over here and um, keeping it a bit neater i guess um and we're only going to execute this other stuff if the zoom is currently in process which is uh, progress which implies basically you have your right mouse button clicked down okay so basically if your right mouse cl uh, is clicked and you're moving your mouse uh you want uh, we've already evaluated the drag sum x and drag sum y in a separate function that we've already looked at uh, you just want to utilize uh, the evaluated numbers here. Uh, the first thing that I do is, if you want, you can invert direction. So I've inverted it over here, so on, on Y. Uh, but this is basically, you know, like when you're right-clicking and you're moving your mouse left, some people will expect the object or the camera to rotate left. 
others might expect it to go right you know so based on your preferences uh you can control that here you can parameterize it as you like uh, and the next thing that we're going to do is um, multiply the sensitivity by the way you could just add another pin here and do it there but for comments sake i kept them separate uh, and the sensitivity by default i put it as 0.03 you'll probably find that this is uh, consistent with a timer event as well so uh so basically in the bind event here you can see we've got a timer and the time is 0.03 uh you will find that this kind of correlates with that quite nicely so you could parameterize it and put an input over here as well uh, so this will be the delta t and by the way this is again how you can evaluate the event tick as well so uh the sensitivity could basically be based off this as well plus another multiply if you like okay so let's go back here and rotate um okay so we've uh, inverted it if we liked uh we multiplied it by sensitivity so all we want to do now is add uh the velocity um which is basically this uh times uh, or rather add to the previous velocity right so um this means that if you keep moving more like you will just keep on adding to that velocity but that velocity will still fade down by 10 percent on every tick okay and you just repeat that across x and y and uh, some people might want to have a different multiplier over here so you know you could basically uh, add yourself another pin and just you know like basically multiply it by something else either 0.5 or like 1.5 whatever like uh, keep it as you like you can basically have uh, the sensitivity multipliers as different values on both the x and y axes uh, to keep it cleaner um, so but that's basically what we do here uh, we're evaluating what the speed should be or the velocity and we add it to the current one and then once we've done that we basically add uh, the world rotation uh, with the velocity so by the way i'm using set world ro rotation so uh you'll see uh you can do add world rotation so this would have looked simpler right so because of the moment i get the um target rotation from the spring arm and then i add some stuff to velocity x and then i set set that over here um you might think that you can do that here right so basically just add it to z here right like like this uh, but this actually has some issues for whatever reason it keeps adding stuff to the roll of the pitch as well occasionally and it just looks a bit buggy um, I haven't seen that bug out on set world rotation so this actually behaves a lot better um, and likewise uh, add worlds offset this this seems to, to function as expected so I haven't had issues with that but potentially you might need to set world offset if you've seen issues. Uh, but like I say, this one seemed to behave good. Uh, for whatever reason, add world rotation seemed a bit buggy. So I do set world rotation instead. Um, and yeah, uh, this other stuff um, I'm using for rotating objects instead of the camera. So <laughs> they're not important. Uh, so this actually achieves everything you need from the rotation. Uh, so yeah, let's have a quick look in, into this again. So right mouse button moving up and down. I can move up and um, yeah, it will keep moving uh, with a bit of a de decay. Uh, you can see I didn't actually add any limits uh, on moving up or down. Again, you can do something similar with curves or whatever you like really. Uh, if you don't mind the hard stop, then you can just add an if statement, you know, if, if the distance is more than X, you know. Uh, then basically stop adding more um, curves will make things smoother so you can check that out um, and yeah with the rotations as well um, so yeah that's how we can use spring arms for handling the zoom and rotation and uh, there's going to be another video uh, for doing some similar stuff uh, but it is a bit different right so um, basically have a look at the one uh, that you need in your project and yeah, till next time. See ya.